Dreamscape presents The Longevity Code Secrets to Living Well for Longer From the Front Lines of Science By Chris Verberg, M.D. Narrated by Pete Cross Preface We live in a strange world A world in which people are mortal world in which most life forms age and die. There are a few exceptions, organisms that do not age, that are immortal, or that can even become younger. But for the large majority of everything that walks, crawls, swims, or flies on this earth, mortality is an integral part of existence. That is strange because from a biological viewpoint, there is no reason why aging and mortality should exist. For centuries, Biologists have addressed the question of why something as strange as aging exists. As we shall see, aging is not simply the result of what is generally thought to be inevitable wear and tear, nor is aging meant to combat overpopulation, whereby older animals must make room for younger animals. In this audiobook, we will discuss why some organisms age very rapidly and other organisms can grow hundreds or thousands of years old or not age at all. In the second part of the audiobook, we will talk about what happens in our body that makes us age. Once we have a better understanding of why we age, we will also be better able to figure out how we can slow down the aging process. That is what the third part of this audiobook is about. We will see that certain foods, interventions, and substances can slow down the rate at which we age. The problem in the West is that we are consuming too many foods that accelerate aging and cause obesity as well. It is not a coincidence that overweight people are at risk of all kinds of aging-related diseases, such as heart attack, dementia, and diabetes. We will also see that the epidemic of obesity is not simply a matter of too many calories and too little exercise, as is often claimed. Then we will focus on therapies that are currently being developed to slow down aging or that are already in use to treat certain rare diseases that bear similarities with aging. Not only can these therapies drastically slow down the aging process, but they could even reverse it. Reversing aging means making people younger such as by erasing wrinkles, making blood vessels elastic again, and curing aging-related diseases, such as heart failure and Alzheimer's disease. We will see that this is not impossible. To the contrary, many scientists are amazed by how easy it is to reprogram a body into a more youthful state. In the final part of this audiobook, We will discuss the great social revolutions that are rapidly approaching due to the fact that we will be living longer and longer. Current life expectancy increases by six hours every day. And in a relatively near future, when technologies become available to drastically slow down the aging process and even reverse it, we must consider a scenario in which people can stay healthy and young for a very long time. Even without these new technologies, we know that the first person who will reach the age of 135 has already been born. Some scientists even suggest that the first person to reach the age of 1,000 has also already been born. Regardless of whether the latter will turn out to be true, one thing is certain. Our increasing knowledge will enable us to transform disease, life, and death. This future is closer than we think, and therefore, we need a plan. A plan that will enable us to benefit from this future revolution as much as possible, so that we have a greater chance of enjoying the fruits of these new developments. This book is intended to serve as a guideline for that plan. First, however, we need to understand why something as strange as aging exists to begin with. A brief note. This audiobook contains references to scientific studies. The references are added to serve as an introduction for those listeners who want to delve deeper into the matter. Every claim I make in this audiobook is based not only on the references mentioned in this audiobook, but on my training as a medical doctor, my research, 
thousands of other scientific studies, books, articles, lectures, and conversations with experts in their fields. Introduction Why do we have to die? This is one of the most important questions one can ask. It is, after all, the question why our existence is finite. Although the answer is very interesting, misunderstandings surrounding it abound. One reason for this is because the question can be answered in two ways, why we age and what causes aging. The why examines why aging exists in the first place. Why does it occur in nature? The what looks at exactly what takes place in the body that causes it to age. Let's look first at why aging exists. At first glance, aging is a very strange thing. First, nature allows you to exist. You are born from a fertilized egg cell that divides many times until there are 40,000 billion cells, which together form your body. The complexity of that body is amazing. It consists of more than 250 different kinds of cells, liver cells, muscle cells, eye cells, stomach cells, etc., that work closely together to form a body, which contains as many cells as there are stars in 400 galaxies. A galaxy on average contains 100 billion stars. That is not all, however. After it is born, that body will then amass dozens of years of experiences and memories. It will learn to walk, to bring a spoonful of porridge to its mouth without spilling, to talk, play soccer, solve math problems, dance, drive a car, and play bingo. That body will store a treasure trove of memories and knowledge, enough to fill an entire library with sounds, images, and smells. Then, nature abandons that same body which has finally built up all these cells, knowledge, experiences, and memories, and leaves it to wither and die. Of the 150,000 people who die every day, 100,000 die of old age. Each human being who dies is a microcosm of billions of cells, experiences, and memories that implodes and is lost forever. Why? Would it not be much more efficient for nature not to allow people to age, but to continually repair and maintain them so they would stay young and fit forever? That is very well possible, as we shall see not a single law of nature forbids immortality. But Mother Nature does exactly the opposite. She allows bodies to age and die only to replace them with newborn bodies. That is much less efficient and it costs a lot more time and energy. After all, she has to start from scratch every time. A baby has to grow and learn for many years, only to age and die. It would take much less time and energy to keep a body young and fit for centuries than to replace it each time with a newborn child. Mother Nature is the greatest squanderer that exists. After building a very complex body, she abandons that body and lets it age and die. It is ultimately thrown away. Nature has thrown out quite a few bodies, roughly more than 150 billion of them, all the people who ever lived and are now dead. In other words, on the face of it, aging and mortality are not logical at all. It is strange that aging exists. For centuries, biologists have wondered about this. Not until the 20th century did they finally find an answer. That answer is not self-evident. It is certainly not true that we grow old because we wear out. Furthermore, the answer nicely explains why some animal species age hardly at all, whereas others age and die very rapidly. In short, the why of aging inquires why aging occurs everywhere, or almost everywhere, in nature. The what of aging, on the other hand, tries to explain what causes us to age, what mechanisms are at work in our body that slowly but definitely cause that body to age, so that in the end we succumb to these aging processes, most often in the form of a heart attack, stroke, cancer, pneumonia, or dementia. If we can understand what causes us to age, we will be better able to understand what we can do about that aging process.
Let's start with the why of aging. It is an extremely interesting story about elephants, bats, cancer, strange brain diseases, and sex. A lot of sex, actually, because reproduction and lifespan are intricately intertwined. Summary The why of aging explains why aging occurs in nature. The what of aging explains the processes that take place in the body that cause it to age. 1. Why do we age? Many people believe that we age because we wear out. After all, our body must work continuously day in, day out for dozens of years, and that causes it wear and tear. When we leaf through a standard medical handbook, we indeed encounter numerous diseases that appear to be the result of wear. Take, for example, osteoarthritis, also called joint wear. Dozens of years of walking and lifting are thought to be responsible for the inevitable erosion of our joints. Another disease that appears to be due to wear is narrowing of the blood vessels, atherosclerosis, due to the passage of all kinds of sticky debris, certainly after a visit to a fast food restaurant. Although you can slow down this buildup with healthy eating, it is deemed as an inevitable result of the passage of time. Or take dementia. Our brain consists of 86 billion brain cells that fire frantically at all times and will eventually suffer damage. In short, the constant working of our body causes it to wear and aging is assumed to be the unavoidable result. The interesting thing is that this is not really true. Aging is not simply a result of inevitable wear and tear. Take, for example, mice and bats. Both animal species have a very fast metabolism. Metabolism is a collective term for all the processes in the body that allow the body to function. The beating of the heart, the contracting of muscles, the breathing, and the firing of nerve signals. Since mice and bats have a comparable metabolism, one would expect that they also wear and age at the same rate. However, the average lifespan of a mouse is two years, whereas a bat can live to be 30 years old or more. Some bats have been found that were at least 40 years old. In short, although mice and bats both have a very fast metabolism, these two species do not wear at the same rate. That means that the joints, heart, and brain of the bat wear 15 times more slowly than do those of a mouse. Obviously, nature has found a way to drastically slow down joint wear in bats, as well as the clogging of bats' blood vessels and aging of the bat brain. It appears, therefore, that wear and tear is not simply inevitable, but something that to a large extent can be controlled by nature. You could also look at hummingbirds. These little birds live on insects, spiders, and the nectar in flowers. A hummingbird can flap its wings a hundred times per second for many years without developing osteoarthritis or joint wear. If people flapped their arms a hundred times per second, their joints would be worn down to the bone within a few hours. So hummingbirds can stave off the wearing out of their joints much better than humans. By flapping its wings a hundred times per second, a hummingbird can fly from flower to flower at over 30 miles per hour to suck out the nectar. A hummingbird therefore needs a super fast metabolism. Its heart can beat up to 1,200 times per minute compared to the human heart, which typically beats about 70 times per minute. A hummingbird has a metabolism that is 100 times faster than that of an elephant. An elephant lives on average for 55 years. If the metabolism of a hummingbird is 100 times faster than that of an elephant, and if aging is merely a result of wear, one would expect a hummingbird to age 100 times faster than an elephant. In that case, the hummingbird would survive for only about six months, 55 years divided by 100. However, a hummingbird can live to be 12 years old, at least 20 times older than what we would expect based on its metabolism or on wear and tear. In short, aging is not simply a matter of inevitable wear and tear. Mother Nature can determine.